Russians' troops have damaged Kurakov Dam Reservoir in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk region, local authorities said on November 11. A video has been released of the moment of explosion in the reservoir. The Kurakov Reservoir is located on the Vavcha River, with its source in a nearby village. According to regional governor Vadim Filishkin, the water level in the river near Velika Novosilka rose by 1.2 meters as of 4 p.m. on Monday. No homes have been flooded, he added. Russians damaged the dam of the Kurakov Reservoir. This attack potentially poses a threat to residents of settlements on the Vavcha River, both in the Donetsk and Dnipro regions, he said. Filishkin noted that the regional state administration continues to monitor the water level in the river and is ready for any developments. It should be noted that Ukrainian media reported in June last year that Russian troop blew up the dam of the Kakovka hydroelectric power station, which led to casualties, loss of homes and serious environmental consequences. Meanwhile, Ukrainian expert Mikhail Zyrakov said that the damage in Kurakov Reservoir Dam could help the Ukrainian armed forces, because they would get another water line along which they could hold back the enemy. The New York Times has reported that 50,000 Russian and North Korean soldiers are preparing to launch a large-scale counter-offensive in Russia's Kursk Oblast. According to U.S. officials, Russian troops are carrying out missile strikes on Ukrainian positions in Kursk Oblast and deploying artillery against them, but they have not yet launched a large-scale offensive. Ukrainian officials said they expect a large-scale attack involving North Korean troops in the coming days. North Korean troops are currently training with Russian forces in the west of Kursk Oblast. The New York Times reported that some U.S. military and intelligence officials have become more pessimistic about Ukraine's overall prospects, noting that Russia is steadily gaining ground in both Kursk Oblast and eastern Ukraine. Officials say these setbacks are partly the result of Ukraine's failure to address the critical issue of a shortage of troops. One Western official said that Ukraine's surprise invasion of Kursk Oblast in August had weakened its forces across the battlefield in Ukraine's east, leaving Ukrainian troops vulnerable to a Russian offensive. But the official, as well as several other US officials, said Ukraine still has strong defenses in Kursk Oblast and may be able to retain control over the area they currently hold, at least for a while. Western and Ukrainian officials said that the arrival of North Korean troops was a serious escalation after more than two years of war. According to US officials, North Korea has sent more than 10,000 soldiers to fight alongside Russian forces in Kursk Oblast. These troops are wearing Russian uniforms and have been equipped by Moscow, but are likely to be fighting in their own separate units. Ukrainian officials said that Moscow had supplied North Korean troops with machine guns, sniper rifles, anti-tank missiles, and rocket-propelled grenade launchers. According to US officials, Russia has trained the North Koreans in artillery fire, basic infantry tactics, and most importantly, trench clearing. This indicates that at least some of the North Korean forces will be engaged in frontal attacks on Ukrainian forces' dug-in defenses. A Ukrainian official said that North Korean troops were divided into two groups, an assault group and a support group, which would help secure the territory recaptured from Ukrainian forces. Meanwhile, U.S. officials believe that Ukrainian troops will be difficult to dislodge and that Russian and North Korean forces are likely to suffer heavy losses similar to those Russia has suffered in Ukraine's east. U.S. and British military analysts estimate the current number of Russian troops killed and wounded at an average of more than 1,200 per day. The North Koreans will fight as light infantry without the use of armored vehicles, and the current Ukrainian tactics of artillery shelling and drone attacks have proven devastating for unprotected Russian troops, the New York Times reported. 
Nevertheless, if Russia gains momentum, it may not stop at its border, but try to push Ukrainian troops even farther. According to representatives of the U.S. Department of Defense, it is unclear whether the North Korean government will authorize its troops to conduct long-term operations in Ukraine or whether they are intended only for a counter-offensive in Kursk Oblast. Some U.S. officials believe that North Korea may order its troops to stop at the border while Russian forces advance deeper into Ukraine. U.S. defense officials also said they did not know whether North Korea would send additional reinforcements. According to a senior Ukrainian official, Ukrainian intelligence predicted that North Korea could send up to 100,000 troops. <laughs> Military expert, retired colonel of Ukrainian army, Ole Zadanov, suggested that the Chinese authorities may well implement a plan to seize the Russian Federation without war. As an option, the military expert is considering the version that instead of North Korean soldiers, Chinese special forces are being sent to Russia, of which another 15,000 should arrive there by the end of the year. The military expert voiced his version of the provision of North Korean troops to Putin. I think that this is most likely a multi-move by China to put Russia on an unremovable hook so that it cannot break loose, cannot jump off. China gives the go-ahead to North Korea. It may supply part of its ammunition, which North Korea sends to the Russian Federation. Today, the Russian Federation is 60% dependent on North Korea in terms of ammunition. Also, it provides troops, and for quite a long time, since 2019, presumably the military has been coming. And how can you tell a Chinese Special Forces soldier from a North Korean? An interesting question, right? Both language and appearance are similar. If we assume that China is providing its special forces, then they are already in the Kursk region. And in Kursk is a stone's throw from Moscow. Ole Zadanov added. At the same time, the colonel emphasized, Prigozhin covered 800 kilometers from Rostov in half a day or a little more. And here from Kursk to Moscow, it is very close. By the way, by the end of this year, 15,000 soldiers should enter the territory of the Russian Federation at four training grounds. And the Far East itself has long been assimilated by the Chinese a long time ago. Newspapers are in Chinese. Television is Chinese. Yes, China is likely unsettled by this new phase of Moscow's fast-growing alliance with Pyongyang, which since last September has shipped thousands of containers believed to contain munitions and other material to help replenish Russian forces' stocks. Beijing has presented itself as a neutral party regarding the war, while at the same time censoring anti-war comments on Chinese social media and providing dual-use goods to Russia, its heavily sanctioned partner. China is also a critical economic lifeline because of discounted sales of Russian natural gas and oil. China also wields considerable influence over Kim Jong-un's regime, having, for decades, propped up its state-controlled economy to prevent a regime collapse that could drive millions of North Korean refugees across the Chinese border.